I don't want to brag, but I grew up in a very rich family, and it so happened that I started doing business at the age of 16. As you probably already understood, I have achieved excellent results. But at the same time, I do not have a family, and I never intended to build a serious long-term relationship until I met her. We got married, but three months later, our marriage broke up because of her infidelity. Now I'll tell you why and what consequences she faced. I'm Martin, a 34-year-old guy. My wife's name is Elizabeth, or to be more precise, ex-wife, and she was five years younger than me. I met Elizabeth about nine months before our wedding at a friend's party, and I was immediately captivated by her beauty. As we got to know each other, she revealed her easygoing nature and desire to live independently. I was the one who could give it to her, because after all, I have a successful business that brings me six-digit zeros annually. It didn't even bother me that my friends and acquaintances didn't speak of Elizabeth in the best light, to put it simply. In the past, she was a fierce party girl and not a faithful girl. But that didn't stop me because it seemed to me that I recognized her from a completely different side. To be honest, my ego played a role here because I always thought that I understood people in Desitas. I devoted most of my life to my favorite business, and I already wanted to build a family. Six months later, I was sure that she was the one I wanted to marry. I proposed while on vacation on a private island, and we had a grand wedding that the whole city was talking about. The media coverage and public attention were overwhelming, and everyone seemed to want to be a part of our fairy tale romance. On the day of the wedding, Elizabeth and I decided to set aside separate rooms for our personal space, realizing the importance of individuality in marriage. We respected each other's aspirations and provided space for personal growth. Trust was crucial in our relationship, allowing us to maintain each other's well-being and maintain a healthy balance between our personal lives and those of a couple. What an idiot I am. More on this later. To celebrate our wedding, I organized a cruise for Elizabeth and her friends, believing that it would give her the freedom to enjoy special moments with her closest people. Despite her constant partying and late nights, I believed in her happiness and well-being. However, her behavior had a negative impact on our relationship. My wife confessed to me that she did not come from a rich family like me, and adapting to our rich lifestyle was too much for her. I tried to understand her point of view, and decided to give her more time to adjust to the role of a rich man's wife. It's been almost three months since our wedding, and Elizabeth still lives in a separate room. Although we share moments of love and passion, there remains an emotional distance between us, which makes me wonder if there are deeper problems here. I want to establish trust and make her feel at home by considering the opportunity to discuss my concerns about our relationship with her. I decided to wait a week before starting a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, hoping that it would be a delicate approach to our feelings without causing harm. I must say, right away, I was worried about all this, her past, her desire to live separately. But for me, it seemed like the norm, if I may say so, since this was my first long-term relationship that I wanted to build. One day, while collecting papers for a meeting, I noticed that Elizabeth was not at home. Curiosity prompted me to explore her room. I didn't have a clear goal. I trusted her. But that day, some inner force prompted me to do it. While searching, I found an invitation to a private party in her room, organized in her honor. In the invitation, she was praised as the most beautiful woman who deserves the love of every man. Intrigued, I found out that the party was taking place at my competitor's private villa, which occupied a good place in my niche. It surprised and angered me. Why the hell is this woodpecker sending my wife an invitation? I believed that she would not go there, but I decided to visit this place anyway. Worried, I called Elizabeth, who said she was going to a friend's sleepover party until the next evening. Trusting her, I decided to go to the villa anyway. Upon arriving at the party, I noticed Elizabeth's car and confirmed her presence. Trying to gather information unnoticed, I looked out the window and saw men in varying degrees of undress, focused on something below. 
Puzzled, I was about to ring the doorbell when I saw Elizabeth among them, and what she was wearing shocked me. Naked breasts and wearing only panties, I found myself in a state of shock, unable to express any emotions. Just before coming to the conclusion that this was probably the worst sight of the day, one of the men walked up to Elizabeth and kissed her. She responded with laughter, and the other men began to cheer her on. My feelings were replaced by a mixture of rage and disappointment. Determined to get Elizabeth out of this situation, I quickly headed for the main entrance. However, I had a sudden idea that led me back to the window where I started recording visitors. There were seven men there, all of them my business competitors, and of course, Elizabeth. At that moment, I wanted to call the goons and break into their party to kick everyone's ass and take my unfaithful wife. Angry and disappointed, I thought about what I could achieve by taking Elizabeth away. These men were my competitors, and I couldn't let them bully me through her. Refusing to take immediate action, I left the stage, thinking about how to embarrass them and teach Elizabeth a lesson. When I walked out of the villa to my car, driving it like crazy, I couldn't comprehend everything I witnessed. I gave Elizabeth everything she wanted, was great in bed, and shared stormy nights and days with her. Elizabeth's inexplicable actions made me struggle with a burning desire for revenge. I honestly don't understand why she did that. When Elizabeth returned home the next evening, she was calm despite her betrayal the night before. Suppressing my anger and betrayal, she was calm despite her betrayal the night before. Suppressing my anger and betrayal, I played along with her by asking about her sleepover. She casually described it as having fun with friends. However, my mind was focused on developing a plan of retaliation. Consumed by anger, betrayal, and a thirst for revenge, I vowed to make them pay for interfering in my affairs. Pretending that I was going on a business trip, I informed her about hiring a personal secretary named Jennifer. Introducing Jennifer to Elizabeth, I noticed her discomfort but insisted that I always invite her when I urgently need to go somewhere. After spending an hour with Jennifer, I outlined her role to annoy Elizabeth and sow doubt in our relationship. The next morning, Jennifer came into our bedroom to wake me up, surprising Elizabeth. I apologized and left the house saying that I would be back in two weeks. Staying at the hotel, I closely followed Elizabeth's actions and gathered information about the seven men from the party. Having hired a personal investigator, I gathered evidence to expose their actions and make sure that they would pay for what they decided to do. Yes, Elizabeth turned out to be a little stupid, but the fact that they took advantage of human weakness does not make them smarter. Both personally and professionally, Elizabeth stood out as a unique case that prompted me to personally investigate her actions. Honestly, it amused me. It was a new experience, even if it was so painful. My intention was to observe her behavior for two weeks when I was not around. Anticipating her departure from our house, I closely monitored her car in order to make public the place of her meeting. She chose the hotel where she met Tony Phillip, my main competitor. At lunch, they laughed and smiled, sometimes showing physical intimacy, demonstrating the lack of resistance on Elizabeth's part. After lunch, Philip escorted her to his villa, and I chose not to witness that evening anymore. Tony was my enemy. In 2015, he tried to destroy my business by resorting to illegal methods. I won't go into it. Just know that this is not an honest and very greedy person whom I have already kicked ass. After getting some information about Tony Phillip from my private investigator, I got the contact details of Tony's fiancé. I anonymously informed her about the surprise Tony had planned, giving her the address for their meeting. When she arrived, the guards bribed by me helped her enter the villa. When she saw Tony in a compromising situation, she confronted him face to face, throwing her wedding ring at him. Subsequently, she decided to break off the engagement and withdraw her investment in his business. Yes, you understood correctly. He even chose a rich wife for himself so that she would invest in his business and he would stay alive. It's such a shame. Subsequently, I applied a similar approach to other men, exposing their infidelity and making sure they face the consequences. 
The last surprise for Elizabeth was that I decided to get this whole company back together. At the same time, I invited Elizabeth, portraying her as the only woman who understood them and did not condemn them because all the guys had lost their wives and did not understand how they found out about their infidelity. The party was held in the villa. I gave the guard a thousand dollars to set up hidden cameras in the entire villa on his own. There were about seventy of them, and they were even in the toilet. When the event started, I initiated a live broadcast available to everyone. The screens of my company and other companies displayed the unfolding events, revealing the indiscretion of the participants. I also want to mention that their phones were seized at the entrance. I made sure that they did not know about the broadcast, so that they thought it was a private party. The ensuing chaos of ringing phones added to my satisfaction that their professional and personal lives were on public display. Reflecting on the two-week investigation into Elizabeth, it became obvious that her feelings for me were insincere. It seems that she was guided by the financial benefits and privileges associated with being my wife. Looking back, I admit my mistake when I fell in love with a man who showed the traits of a gold digger. It was my big mistake, because I could have predicted it in advance. The desire for wealth was acceptable, but what bothered me was her attempt to deceive me by posing as a faithful wife. She had not only an affair but also relationships with people I often talked to. Their smug expressions during business discussions hinted at their secret relationship with my wife, and this was unacceptable to me. Exposing not only Elizabeth, but also sending a clear message to these men has become my mission. I put together the entire video of the party, leaving a message for Elizabeth about my upcoming arrival. Since the cameras captured them in an intimate embrace, I gave her enough time to return home, unaware of what was waiting for her. When I entered, accompanied by Jennifer, I casually greeted Elizabeth and turned my attention to Jennifer, deliberately ignoring her. Elizabeth, feeling ignored, eventually left in despair, indicating that my revenge plan was taking effect. After returning from a business trip, I strategically avoided Elizabeth, knowing that her lovers were facing legal problems and could not contact her. By blocking all contacts and keeping her in the dark about the footage, I made her feel unwanted and ignored in her own home. Jennifer took over the household chores, and Elizabeth, feeling detached, complained to me about Jennifer's intrusion. I brushed off her concerns, wanting her to believe that this was normal. To enhance the intellectual game, I suggested that Elizabeth spend time with friends at the club, while discreetly watching her. While she was having fun, I prepared for an unexpected turn of events that she would not forget. Looking forward to her reaction, I carefully planned every detail. Elizabeth came back drunk around midnight and found me on the couch with Jennifer, who was sitting in front of me on her knees. Confused, she came over and demanded an explanation. I invited her to join us, exacerbating her anger. Accusing me of infidelity, she did not suspect that I had organized the final exposure. When she stood next to me, I showed the compromising footage on the home theater screen, a huge 4K plasma. Shock and disbelief showed on her face as the reality of her actions was revealed. She asked where I got it, but I blithely admitted that I wrote it down myself. Her attempts to find words to explain herself failed, and a heavy silence reigned in the room, exposing the weight of her guilt and regret. I caught her at the scene of the crime, and she couldn't find the right words to explain herself. Sitting on the couch, I eagerly scanned the footage while she looked uncertainly from the screen to me. It was unclear whether the situation upset me or amused me. Commenting on what happened, I expressed my appreciation for her interaction with one of the people, a skill I admired. I motioned for her to join me to view all the footage together, and she reluctantly complied, watching with her head bowed, fully aware of her significant mistake. During the playback of the video, I noticed discomfort on her face, indicating regret and understanding of the impending consequences. After subjecting her to a two-hour viewing, I noted that it was funny, highlighting her amazing connections with close friends who seemed to feel comfortable in her presence. Elizabeth, realizing the seriousness of her actions, remained silent, only apologizing meekly. 
She explained that these men had convinced her to spend the night with them. Faced with pressure to keep them from winning, she attended the party. Impressed by her ability to fabricate a story, I pretended to agree, suggesting that she could use our marital status to avoid the situation. However, she stated that she did not want to tarnish my reputation and continued her convincing game. Feigning sympathy for her apparent sacrifice, I directed her to the dining table for water. Putting the glass down on a piece of paper, she found the same invitation that she had hidden under the dresser. The glass slipped out of her hands and smashed on the floor. At that moment, she realized that there was no point in making up stories, since I was already aware of her actions. Collapsing to the ground, she burst into tears, but tears were not salvation. After forcing her to confess everything, I made the painful decision to kick her out of the house. Despite her pleas for another chance, I remained resolute, realizing that forgiveness was not an option. It was a difficult choice, but I knew it was necessary, not wanting to make room for a scammer in my heart and home. She begged for forgiveness, explaining her actions by saying that she could not think clearly and was influenced by the wealth of those involved. However, learning from my past, I stood firm, knowing that such mistakes should not be repeated. In order to preserve my own well-being and self-esteem in the future, I have made a personal commitment that if I ever have feelings for someone new, I will carefully assess whether they are suitable to become a part of my life. This valuable lesson was a direct result of the betrayal I experienced from Elizabeth. Within a week of learning about her infidelity, I immediately asked my lawyer to prepare the divorce papers, ensuring that she would not receive any rights from me because of the chaos she had brought into my life. In order to expose her actions and bring her to justice, I took measures such as distributing photos and videos of her cheating in the media, which tarnished her reputation. I also warned large companies in advance against hiring her, and I continued to assign a private investigator to monitor her activities, maintaining awareness of her actions. My intention was to convey to her the problems she would face without me and make her regret the consequences of cheating. I also took steps to prevent her from easily finding a place to live and subjected her to insults when looking for a job. Despite her refusal to agree to a consensual divorce and her insistence on alimony, I was amused by her audacious demands for money and property. She even resorted to deception, falsely claiming pregnancy in order to receive child support and property in the name of the child. I countered this by requesting a DNA test, which eventually revealed her lies and led to a defamation case along with divorce proceedings. Elizabeth, who initially seemed like a wonderful woman, turned out to be motivated by financial gain, which explained her initial reluctance to share a living space. The realization was painful but I am grateful that I revealed her true intentions before the situation escalated. The saying, love is blind, takes on a personal meaning for me, encompassing both blindness and insecurity. By embarking on this difficult path, Elizabeth not only ruined our marriage, but also tarnished my reputation. The judgmental looks and mocking expressions on the faces of others weigh heavily on me, adding to the difficulty of overcoming the consequences of such a devastating revelation. Eventually, Elizabeth returned to her parents, a small town. As far as I know, she got a job as a waitress at some local bar. I'm not gloating over her. I really feel sorry for her. She could have built a happy future for herself. We could have had children, but she made her choice, and I think that these are not such harsh consequences that she could face. Maybe I'm a kind person, and it's for nothing. But I won't change my kindness. I believe that the real heights are achieved by the person who is kind and happy. This situation did not make me look askance at all women. On the contrary, I understand that I will soon be able to find the one with whom I can live a long and happy life. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, Please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.